So um, that's not my turf exactly how to, how to operate this uh, uh, office suite. But if you come with a question like uh, trying to build that with my latest uh, GCC 6 version and there's a 10-line error message, that's a question that I would like to discuss with you. Um, but what we'll actually talk about today is um, seeing to get LibreOffice um, integrated or working with the XCG app thing, um, which is um, a kind of two-thing approach. So what, what actually is XCG app? Um, there's, I think, even a Wikipedia site for it now. Um, so it's, it starts to get popular. Um, it's an approach to this uh, common set of problems that you have programs on the internet, programs from anywhere. You want to make sure that they do run on your computer on the specific um, set of, of libraries and APIs that you have on your machine that might not be the ones that the person who, who actually built that software has. Um, you also want to have security if you download some program from somewhere. Um, you might not be too sure that that is something that wouldn't uh, do something malicious to your machine. So um, the idea for, for the Linux ecosystem is XDG app, which started off in kind of the GNOME, Fedora, Red Hat world. Um, and yeah, there's these two, two, two ideas behind it. Have some format to ship software to the end user in a way that it will definitely run there um, and make it run there in a way that ideally it, it can't do any harm um, if it turns out to be not from a guy you would want to trust. So the other part of the puzzle is LibreOffice in this case. It is huge. It has, nobody exactly knows how to count the number of the lines of code, for example, because it's so many ones, but it's in the millions. It has a very long history through time, through various incarnations of Star Office, Open Office. Now we're at LibreOffice. Um, dates back to the 1980s, even the, the oldest parts of the code. Um, it runs on, on all different platforms, or all the ones that are still relevant today. We dumped the OS2 port at some point, but we're still Linux, Microsoft, of course, Mac. Um, building that is often kind of a challenge because um, we come with, like, in the hundreds of configure switches, you can enable, disable kind of anything from whether you want to build a debug build through uh, what um, help, con the help content and the UI and in what kinds of languages you want to bring that along. And all, this, all the libraries that typically on, on Linux you find on the system, um, but on, on Windows, for example, they are not there. So we need to bring along these, at least for Windows anyway. So we have a, a zoo of like 100 um, submodules that are integrated in our code. So we don't ship the actual code of those. You need to, to uh, get them from the internet as well as tables. We automate that. But then we integrate that in all, into our build system so that we have just one make everything that then goes into all these submodules that you did want to include uh, and, and, and builds that as well. So typically, typical submodules are built only boost thing, for example, but we also ship our own uh, complete Python 3 um, because some platforms just don't have it. Um, and then more uh, office specific stuff like this a zoo of, of little libraries that help us in uh, importing the various file systems, the document file formats that are out there. So we've split that out as well. Um, 
Another part is that, as I said, we have you can specify which, which languages, and we have like localizations in around 100 uh, languages by now. There's a quite vibrant community around LibreOffice um, translating it into all these various languages, and, and there's uh, ever more coming and, and trying to pick that up. Um, so yeah, that's um, what LibreOffice is. And <laughs> we're quite uh, prominent for whatever tool chain there's out there. Um, we're sure to break it at least in one or two places. Um, so that's also my, my main point of interest in, in, in this big office suite is not the applications that you actually run, um, but this large corpus of software that when you think about some, some compiler improvement, for example, um, that would be cool to try out or implement it in Clang as a plugin, um, then you're sure if you, if you run it on that million line code base, you'll at least find one or two places where that uh, you check actually hits and, and you can fine tune it there and, and be happy that you improved our code base with it and that's great. Um, so a natural fit for a new environment to run applications in like XCG app is to try one of the big ones and if that one sticks in there and works in there then we can be pretty sure that XGG app is a technology that works also for the humble little, all the other apps that are out there. So what do we do? Um, I'll first start with a with a part about actually building LibreOffice so that it fits into XGG app. That's the one part of XGG app. The other, so that we can distribute it. The other part, of course, is the sandboxing, seeing that it doesn't do any harm. And I'll come to that in the second part. So as I said, we're multi-platform. Um, so the easiest platform to target actually is, is Mac, because that's a very tightly controlled one. Um, you exactly know what's available if you target Mac 10.8, for example, as your minimum baseline. Then you're sure what to find there. Windows as well, uh, but unfortunately Linux is more fractured because of, of the more free approaches we have here. So that's a pro and, 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 and it can be a con as well if you actually try to, to build your software and, and distribute it there. Um, like the different package formats, different um, versions of libraries. Um, so what that leads to is that Every Linux distro actually um, builds and, and packages and distributes LibreOffice themselves. Um, problem uh, solved not, not uh, completely because some distros might be outdated. We have a very um, active development cycle, so every half year we, we kind of deliver a new uh, a version, micro, a minor version, so 5.1 is around the corner next week, I think. We'll happily put that out. So people want to, to use the latest and greatest always, and, and uh, QA people want to test that stuff, so we need to have builds um, available from, from our LibreOffice itself. So when switching hats from my Red Hat hat to my document foundation, that's the legal entity kind of thing behind our LibreOffice upstream. Um, and we need to see how to build that stuff and, and get it out um, to Linux users. Um, so what we do at the moment is to, to have some old CentOS baseline um, that we settle on, but that of course has drawbacks because when it's an old baseline, you don't have the new features. You, we only could use GTK3, for example, um, since, since recently, and, and other problems. And some people use KDE, so there's also problems if you use some uh, GNOME-specific functionality 
like these backends to talk to all these various uh, internet protocols to download documents from, then there's no alternative in KDE, for example. So we need something better there. And our hope, of course, is that the XCG app will gather enough traction that it is the new format in which we can um, deliver this to all happy Linux users. And uh, another benefit, of course, will be that for a distro, um, you can stay on a, on a stable uh, baseline there, on a, ba on a stable fundament. Don't need to update GNOME on your complete distro just to benefit from GNOME updates um, that you would have in, in LibreOffice. Um, so could also be uh, an, a, a cool feature for distros like RHEL. Another um, use case where it might be, or will definitely be interesting, is um, there's a um, LibreOffice developer who had that cool idea. Um, you want to find out something broke with one of the latest builds, um, something you can see in the UI doesn't work anymore. So what you do is you git bisect that. When you want to do that with LibreOffice, the problem is building LibreOffice can easily take hours. So your bisecting experience will be very poor and you'll need tons of coffee uh, for the in-between times. And you can't easily tell one of our eager QA people um, who would like to bisect that down, but you can't tell them, um, yeah, see for yourself how to build that and, and, and see which, which uh, build actually uh, broke it. So the idea, you do a Git repo for bisecting, but we don't put the, co the, the code in there, but the pre-built binaries. So you do a, for every version of the source, you do a build, you put it in a Git repo, that one does grow, but not that much, because many of the libraries will stay the same from build to build. So we have now huge Git repos full of versions from like the 5.0 to the 5.1 time period of LibreOffice. And the QA people just once download this huge blob, and then Git bisecting is a snap, because actually switching checking out the actual state is, is very, very fast with Git. So that's cool, the, but the, the people or the, the person who invented that and then that was a cold winter, uh, so he started up his fat machine and actually did all these builds because you once need to do these, these builds uh, and he had a warm house for a while doing that. But when you do a mistake there and, and uh, do it not on our Sandos baseline, but for example, our stupid, and do it on a Ubuntu thing, uh, then what will fall out of it is uh, binaries that do work mostly, but there might be one library on Ubuntu that we depend on that has a different uh, version than uh, on, on Fedora. So many of the people who want to run these uh, can't actually use them. Uh, that mistake did happen. The actual fix uh, happily was to only do some sim linking of, of uh, just the name was, was wrong for that system library, so we could work around it with a sim link. Well, that guy didn't want to go back and, and reheat his house again because by now it was springtime. Uh, so if he would start it out with XCG app in the first place, that problem would never have happened. So this is another use case. Um, where building to a de well-defined platform that is guaranteed to run on everybody's machine uh, is definitely a win. By the way, if there's any questions, you can just um, ask now or wait until later. Um, so 
the building, actually building LibreOffice uh, for XDG app is uh, still quite in the, in the kind of uh, experimental stage, so there's no uh, official repo of it yet, but uh, I do manage <coughs> to get it built, the, the, for example, the latest uh, LibreOffice version. Um, what you do to get that build is the idea of XDG app is that you have some specified runtime, like there's, for example, a GNOME 316 or a GNOME 318 uh, runtime that has a, 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 defini a defined set of uh, functionality of libraries. Um, then there's an, the, the kind of SDK complementing that, that you also have the, the devil headers uh, also available, which you don't need at runtime, of course, but for, for actually building that. Um, it is based on, on, on some uh, project that uh, is a bit different from, from what you know from uh, other um, Linux distros. So there is some minor um, places where it didn't quite fit um, to just un, uh, uh, download the LibreOffice Git repo and, and do a, a configure and, and make. For example, we are using some uh, obscure Perl code still in our millions of lines to, to bundle stuff up. That is from, don't know, 20 years old stuff that nobody ever bothered to clean up or rewrite in Python or whatnot. And that uses some, some code that's just not there in that uh, thing. We had some glue headers. We, we got rid of them. So that's a benefit anyway, that we cleaned out some stuff that we turned out didn't really need. So there was, for example, no glue devil uh, packages in, in that uh, XCG app SDK. <laughs> there was one stupid or curious hack in there that when you run the XML config, which is like the package config for libxml, then in that Yocto thing it was hard-coded as doing an exit one. So I, I wondered why our internal copy of libxml refused to, to, to work when to compile until I dug deep enough into, deep enough into that to, to find it out. Um, I disabled some of our zoo of, of uh, stuff that, that didn't quite work, like there's some minor issues with uh, uh, trying to get GStreamer. We have a GStreamer backend. We have a GStreamer 1.0 and a GStreamer 0.10 uh, backends in there. So the 1.0, uh, there was some glitches. I just, for the first uh, experiments, I just left it out and, and have to revisit um, how we get that working. Um, left out our whole Java, so the option would be to, to include a JVM uh, in our bundle as well um, to get our Java parts running if you want to use that at all. Um, but the, what fell out there already is quite big with 300 max. So we're definitely one of the bigger um, bundles that will be available for XTG app. The idea is that, of course, smaller apps will be just tiny in comparison to that in, in what you need to download. That's the price for our heavy thing. Um, so for coming to the Second part, I guess I'll give a quick demo of what we have. Um, can I read that? So I prepared something um, and called it Libro. Office, LibreOffice. So the idea is that every application in XCG app has an identifier that reversed uh, DNS name style. Um, so I built that, uh, packaged that up, um, downloaded it from my computer to my computer, installed it in the local XCG app um, cache to have it available there, and then you run it that way. And It no longer works. Libre. Did 
Did I mistype that? Or what is it? Ah, not low, org. So the error messages from XCGF are still a bit, there's room for improvement there. Um, so there just wasn't a low LibreOffice, but just a ORC LibreOffice, of course. So boots up in no time. Looks like your average or normal LibreOffice experience. Um, so there's a writer here. And uh, you can just type in something. There's a the help should even work. Boom, boom, boom. No, that's the other one. Help should even work. Help won't work. Demo time. <laughs> Doesn't matter. But um, we want to open some document to edit it. Um, and where are my documents? Well, they're, they're not here. My computer, what happened? My home directory is completely empty. Um, yeah, that's because I, the thing I built here um, also uses the second part of the talk, the sandboxing, that this instance of LibreOffice looks like a normal one but doesn't have any access to, to anything on your machine. So it has a fake um, file system. The app itself is uh, installed in some app tree. So we have LibreOffice here. We do have some license file that is part of LibreOffice, we can open that, that works, but there's nothing else we can reach on the machine. So that's the sandboxing uh, part that uh, for something like a, 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 an office suite where you want to operate on your files, on your documents, modify your documents, uh, yeah, that's, that's not ideal. Um, so we can opt out of that. With um, telling XDG app to give access to the whole um, file system. So there we are, we can now open a file from my home directory. And there's for example, the very presentation I'm doing now, and that works. Um, but there's another, even cooler way. Um, so we stop that again. So I now opted out of, of uh, having the file system hidden. I'll opt in again to have the file system hidden. Um, that's the original one. I'll start again. There's nothing here. Um, but we have multiple file open dialogues in LibreOffice because we have everything. There is a way to switch that. Whoop. I'll use the internal one and I hack that one. And what I do there is use some tunnel that is provided by XCG app via Dbus to get out of um, the, the jail which LibreOffice runs in to the whole system, and I have some kind of file chooser where I get access to the, uh, to the complete file system to, to, to select a file, but nothing more. Um, so I can go to my um, slides here, select them, open them. What happens there is that I don't get access to from, from inside the the jail to the outside, I just get access to that file chooser that picks that file for me and then tunnels it back in. Just that one file, nothing more. Um, and it's even read-only here. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, so that's the idea of how to get access to, to your functionality you want to have inside your XCG app jail um, via these, these uh, portals that connect you with the outside world in a, in a secure way. Um, so
So back to the presentation, the real one. So yes? So what does two way mean? I mean uh, only yeah, that's, that's coming in a second. Um, so that's basically what I, what I said for that opt-in, opt-out. You can have that for, for the file system and, and for other things as well, for talking through sockets and, and stuff like that. There's a fine-grained way of telling XDG app which parts of the outer world or of the, of the uh, system you want to, to uh, get, make available to the app. Um, and for that access to the file system, um, how it works, or, or the, the underlying idea always with these portals is that there needs to be some code that actually does not run within the jail. Um, so we can be sure that the app in the jail cannot modify it or tamper it or, or do any bad thing about that. It doesn't have any control about it. It just has some um, some connection to there um, to to ask I want to open a file display to the user a file chooser and be because of that display to the user in there um, it is clear to the user that that app cannot sneakily try to read your password file because the, the, the user is actually asked what file do you want to open by the code that does not run in the jail. So there's no way for the jail to, to try to do sneaky things there because it's always code runs out of, outside the jail, the important code. Code has to ask the user to do something. There needs to be a trigger that the user does. So the user can be sure that he initiated the operations that operate on potentially dangerous parts. So that's the trick behind it. Uh, same would go with, with printing. You would naturally open a print dialog anyway, and that print dialog, again, would not be the LibreOffice one inside of LibreOffice, but some portal-provided print dialog. And uh, for an app like LibreOffice, um, where people, of course, do trust us that we do not write code uh, that is malicious, um, so this, this part of, of being afraid that this app that you download from the internet by, might uh, do harm to your machine is not the most important part, maybe, uh, for LibreOffice. Um, but another big benefit, of course, is uh, we're not perfect. We do have bugs. There are documents that, when you open them, they might trigger a bug that does a bad thing and uh, rewrites your hard disk. But when you run this inside of a, of a jail, you can be pretty sure that whatever bug and whatever obscure uh, import filter that we have cannot cause a zero day for you. So that's the big benefit with an application like LibreOffice uh, that um, consumes documents from the outside and can trigger um, problems in those. And then there's some special things about LibreOffice that make it not so easy to get into a, a, a sandboxed jail. Um, like we saw this, uh, when I got my presentation into the jailed LibreOffice and displayed it there, it was displayed read-only. The problem there is that all I get from the portal um, is the file itself, or rather some um, overlay file system thing that makes just that one file available to me. LibreOffice, with its um, history of being cross-platform, file locking works differently on all different platforms. So it has come up with its own invention of how to do file locking by placing some small file with a special file name next to the original file. Um, and uh, that contains information about who locked that file so there's even some mode in, in Calc where you can have multiple users interacting on a single Calc uh, spreadsheet, and then there's multiple uh, slots in that file designating who is using it. Uh, so that's a quite elaborate format there. 
Um, and that's, of course, something that a simple uh, portal that works great for other apps, uh, where that falls short a bit for LibreOffice, um, where you can't, you just get access to that one file, but you can't put a file, put any other file into that directory that the portal gives you. So there's no way we can place our log file there or see the see a log file from the outside world. Um, so we figure out we can't put a log file there, so it must be a read-only document, so we display it read-only. Um, the API for, the, for those portals, like this uh, uh, file chooser portal or a print dialog portal, that's all not set in stone yet. That's still work in progress in a, in a way. Um, so there would have been um, the first approach how to do that uh, would have been a bit easier for LibreOffice, uh, but we'll certainly find ways around all that. Plus, um, this is all bonus. So the, big, the, the good thing about XCG app being this bundling or packaging so that you can easily distribute it uh, can be seen uh, independent from the second part, from the sandboxing. So you can benefit from all the things of the first part um, without actually needing to modify your apps so that they live in this uh, jail uh, well, because that does mean you need to, to modify, in, in many cases, needs to slightly modify your apps. So for example, with this uh, file dialog that you need to talk to that special portal file dialog, so you need to, to do some uh, changes in the code there. But for the first part, um, that's generally not needed. So the idea is to, to roll that out in phases and be happy with the first phase and, and, and then see to get all the little knobs fixed, little knobs uh, adjusted to get this uh, sandbox experience to something that uh, pleases the user. And yeah, that's it. If there's any questions, there is. Yes, yes. And this one was, for example, uh, allowing no access at all. Uh, so you can configure that at the time you, you uh, build your application and, and bundle it up. For XDG app, you, you specify at that time what the defaults are that you want. But then, of course, they can also be overridden um, uh, at, at runtime when you, when you start that up. And of course, the idea is not that the end user will type in that XCG app and mistype and get a, a confusing error message as I did, uh, but that, that will get integrated into GNOME software, for example, that you just can download it from some well-known re, uh, repositories of, of XCG app applications and then just run it with a click as you, as you normally do. Scarves. There was one. Going up there, the man is sleeping. And there was one uh, there. Any more scarves? Any more questions? There is one. Uh, yeah, of course. So um, that's again something that you want to weigh uh, the the benefits and the, the the problems of it. So what XCG app does offer is that um, you do have that file system uh, for the app um, where only the app is, is mounted, but you also have some uh, space in there that is persistent for the LibreOffice configuration. So for example, when I restart that, now that I have opened that one document once, it will remember that I opened it and that I had switched um, which file dialog to, to use and all that stuff. So all our LibreOffice configuration data does get um, persisted for the benefit of the user, because that's what you typically want. Um, but of course, that can um, mean 
that uh, you can persist some, some, some kind of problem inside the jail. Um, there's no, no uh, if, if you are, of course, if you are um, paranoid enough, you can always uh, purge that and, and restart. I think there's even switches uh, to make that easy with XTG app. So if you want to be very, very sure that there can't be any problem with the multiple documents you open, or once you open one document and that does look suspicious, you can flush out the cache with the downside that all your tweaks to, to the LibreOffice uh, UI configuration stuff will be gone. But, but you can uh, control that and you can have multiple uh, instances of an XDG app uh, that behave differently in that way. So you could have that one just for these very obscure documents uh, from your employer that you're not sure that they, you don't want to look at them in the wild. Thank you. Okay. Great, thank you. Hi. Uh, 